Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're looking at this home light vacuum blower. Little two stroke engine on it. Has been running a few years. Primer bulb is demolished. Let's see what we can do with that. Doesn't run right, customer says. Well, it's going to be hard to start with a primer bulb, but uh, I noticed that the carburetor is loose. Get a solid shot of that. Carburetor's loose. It's filthy. We're going to take it off. We're going to soak it in the ultrasonic uh, cleaner. I've already dumped all the old fuel out of there. If you can call it fuel, it was more like the fuel evaporated, so all that was left is straight oil and water. <laughs> so we're going to tear the carburetor off. We're going to have a look at that. We're going to see what we can do with that primer bulb. This is a com one complete unit. It's not just the uh, the bulb itself so this is uh, similar and I don't have one of those in stock so what I'm going to do is it's already no good I'm going to see if I can pop that yellow band off of there and replace just the uh, the bulb itself because I stock those just the separate bulb all right we'll get you in the stand get some tools gathered some benches cleared and let's dive in all right let's see what kind of a mess we can make here Get this thing flipped around, we'll get the uh, air filter cover off. Well, that's full. Full of grass and junk. Terry. So I've got a couple of 10 millimeter screws here, 10 millimeter nuts. That'll get us our air cleaner base off of there, hopefully. Yep. Well, that's everything. The mount for the throttle and and everything that's all together. Okay. Okay, I gotta loosen the screw here and uh, pull the throttle cable out. Need a needle on those pliers too. This doesn't just clip in, there's a brass fitting that, little brass piece that uh, goes through the throttle arm. It's got a screw in it. There's a hole in the brass piece, and you uh, slide the cable in, then you tighten the screw down, and it holds the cable. You can adjust, you can actually adjust your throttle cable. Okay, that's that. There's our throttle cable here. Get that out of the way. So. It's hard to see in here. So there's a line. So uh, get you zoomed in here. See what I'm see what I'm looking at. Oh, this way. There you go. So there's a line going from the carb to the fuel tank. There's also a line going from the fuel tank to the primer bulb, and one from the primer bulb to the carburetor. So. Gotta pop all those lines off of there and remove that carburetor. That way we can get it disassembled and into the ultrasonic cleaner, which has been heating up over there for a bit. I 
I'm going to have a look and inspect those fuel lines, make sure that they're still good. If they're not, I'll have to replace them. They do harden up over time. Get brittle, crack, and fall off. I had a look inside the fuel tank. I think the uh, I think the fuel filter is plugged up with uh, varnish and crap. So we'll get that out of there eventually. Slide our little carburetor off of here. That's pretty dirty. That's kind of interesting. Get you some uh, close-up shots here of what I was talking about. There's that little brass piece here with a hole in it. So the throttle cable gets pushed through that hole and then you tighten the screw down and it pinches on the cable. But take a look at the, uh, the light on. Instead of a butterfly in there, it's actually a, it's a cylinder. It's not a, a butterfly in a, like in most carburetors. It's a cylinder with a notch in it. That's kind of interesting. It's different. So that to the side for now. There's a big paper gasket here. It goes over these studs. I want to check in behind there and see what's going on with that. Why it's so loose. I don't want to rip and tear this. It's a gasket slash heat shield. Hopefully I can wiggle it out of there. There we are. I'll be able to tuck that back under. That's just a sheet of gasket paper. Here we can see that. I'll get you get you out of the stand for a quick quick close up there. So this little bracket here is actually loose on the engine. It's going to be a massive vacuum leak in there. We'll get those. I'll pull them out. I'll check the condition of whatever's behind there and then get it secured back on there again. Torque screws, so I should have that driver here. Now there is a gasket under it. I think those screws just worked loose over time. Or maybe they were never tight from the factory. Who knows? Whoa. Just checking the passages in here to make sure that our there's a little port there for the pulse for the carburetor. Make sure that's good. I can see the piston from this side, so I'm going to turn it over slow. Just check to see what the piston looks like. See if there's any scoring on the skirt. I can only see the, uh, the intake side, but if I look under the piston, I'll be able to see the bore on the other side, on the exhaust side, to see if there's any scratches. And it doesn't look like there is. There's cross hatch in the cylinder. It looks pretty good. All right, well, let's see what we can do with that primer bulb. So there's two lines on the bulb. That should just pop out of there. Come on, out with you. There we are. So this one went to the base of the carburetor. We're going to leave that on there I think. Because it matters which where they go. There's, I believe there's a check valve inside here that determines what it does. Give that a quick wipe down and we'll have a look. There's that 
crappy primer bulb. Set that to the side for now. I think everything else in here is not too bad. These lines actually don't feel too bad. They're nice and tight in the tank, so they're not going to loose uh, leak out of the uh, from around the line. Yeah, I'll get this little plastic part that was loose. I'll get that back on there and tight. Make sure it tightens up because if, if it doesn't tighten up, I'm gonna have to do something, put a gasket in there or something. grab a screwdriver and do that by hand. Plastic in there so I don't want to wreck anything. Snug. Snug. Well I'm sure that'll run better. <laughs> it was pretty loose before. Nice and snug in there now. carburetor part and we'll get it soaking. That out of the way for now, we don't need that on the bench. I get the uh, camera moved over here, put it on the bench where you can get a closer view of that carburetor. Let's see what happens. Hang on. I decided to see if I can destroy this primer bulb first. Let's see if I can get that ring off of there. I don't know if it's glued or just snapped on or or what. But if I can get that ring off, I think I can change just the bulb. But I gotta get the ring off. It's already no good. What's the worst going to happen? Am I going to wreck it? Well, doesn't look like it wants to move, so you don't need to watch me struggling. So if I get this apart, I'll get the camera back on. All right, so here's where we're at. I used a pair of pliers. I ripped off the old crap bulb, and I was able to work a screwdriver around and get this ring off of there. But it's there's no ridge in the bottom here, and there's no ridge in the base here. So basically, it, it was glued on. So even if I get it put back together, there's nothing there to hold it together. It'll just pop off again. I'm not going to bother with crazy glue and everything. Although, like, it does take a standard uh, 11 sixteenths bulb. So I could put that together with a new bulb in it, but... I'm just going to order a replacement. They're cheap enough. I just figured if this was a, if, if this ring was able to go on and uh, be retained by a, a little groove or something, then I would just do it that way. But since it's not, I'll just order one up. Customer's not in a hurry for it, so we'll get onto the carburetor here and start taking that apart. I'm going to pull the base off. Just make sure you guys are seeing. There we go. I should, you know, I'm just trying to orient it here so so I know what which way this goes back on. We'll take this apart, have a look at the diaphragm in there, and see what uh, see what it looks like. Even though I may not have a kit exactly for this carburetor. A lot of times the diaphragms are the same across different carburetors, so I might have something that works. Well, it's a little crusty. It's a little 
a little crusty. I don't want to tear anything. We're very gentle, make sure that it comes apart without tearing. Yeah, it's not not terrible. Not ideal, but not terrible. If I don't have a kit for it, I'm not in a huge panic. I'm sure I'll figure something out. That smells like old gas. I definitely don't have these gaskets. Just want to be able to put the thing in the ultrasonic cleaner. These little flaps here are important to be flexible. These are okay. I don't. I'm not running carburetor cleaner in the ultrasonic cleaner. I run uh, Simple Green HD Pro. It's the purple stuff. It's supposed to be a, it's aluminum safe. Carburetor cleaner would have definitely destroyed these gaskets and diaphragms, so, and I used to use that, so I used to make sure that all the rubber and plastic was removed from carburetors before I dunked it. This one's not so critical. Yeah, I don't think I can go any, go any further with that. I'll dunk it in the ultrasonic cleaner and see how that goes from there. I'll put that in there too. Make sure all these little passages in the Welsh plug or the uh, screen is is clear. Okay, we'll come back after that. Okay, so the carbs out of the ultrasonic cleaner. I don't have a, an exact kit for this. This is the old gasket and fuel pump diaphragm that uh, was in the carburetor. You notice that there's a couple of holes up here and a slot in the middle. I don't have that exact one, but I do have this diaphragm, brand new. And when you put this all together and have a look at it, those holes aren't even used. They're just kind of hanging out in the open doing nothing. So, I'm going to replace them because I got them. We're going to use that gasket. Gonna move my locating pins a little bit. Now I'll have to notch those out. Those pins hold the uh, the holes in the the two small holes on the outside there. They'll hold that gasket in place, but I don't really need them because uh, the screws will do the same job. I'm just gonna notch the top of this gasket out so I can get it to fit. As long as it seals, I'm happy. Just need the screw holes to align. I think that'll work. Yep, that'll work. We can make it work. Gasket's fine. Let's see if we can get the diaphragm to sit in there. We'll just have to notch that a little bit as well.
cover on. I'll just use the screws to hold everything together. And that'll work just fine. I'm going to get all these screws started before I tighten any of them. That'll make sure everything stays aligned properly. Primer bulb was a lost cause, so I put another one in there that I had in stock. It's just slightly smaller, so but it functions the same. It's got the same ports on it, in and out. I'm just gonna just gonna screw these down till they touch, and then I'll go back around and I'll tighten them all up. Gonna go opposite corners here. Snug. It's a tiny screw in aluminum. Doesn't have to be crazy tight. Okay, that's good. Everything moves nice and free in there. Excellent. Yeah, this old diaphragm wasn't bad. It's it's starting to get firm up a little bit, but. Yeah, we got a new one in there. Should be fine. All right, we'll move the camera around again. Get a better shot. Get the blower back over in the middle of the bench, and we'll uh, keep working away. All right, so we've got that little plastic part that was loose is now tight. Let's get this heat shield slash gasket chucked back in there. Slide it down behind everything. I'm going to wiggle over those studs again. In behind the fuel lines for the primer. Oh, one fell off. That end on the hose is a little loose. I'm just going to trim it back so it's got more of a firm grip on the primer bulb. That's a return to the tank so it sticks into the tank quite a bit. I had a look so I can afford to pull a little bit out of, out of the tank to stretch this back out where I need it. <sighs> Hang on, got a phone call. Alright, so we're back. Got the carburetor slid on there. I got the uh, fuel lines on the primer bulb. Fuel line is on the uh, in here, and I also replace a filter in the tank. After I was done my phone call, I forgot to turn the camera back on. But anyways, <laughs> now we gotta get the uh, throttle cable through that little tiny hole in the brass fitting. There we are. That's in there. We'll get the air cleaner base back on. That's in there. Not hitting anything. A couple of 10 millimeter nuts. Get those fired onto there. Good and snug. <clears throat> now I'll get that throttle cable adjusted. So <coughs> the trigger is released. I'm just going to pull tension on the cable to take up the slack in the cable. And then just tighten that little Phillips screw in there. And that'll hold the cable. Snug. We need needle nose to hold the brass part. Nice. 
Nice, nice. I'm gonna lubricate some stuff in there, make sure it moves around nice and easy. Put a little lube on the cable. A little lube on the pivot for the throttle. Nice, it goes wide open and it goes down to idle. Exactly what we need. Beautiful. I took uh, took the air compressor and blew out the little oil filter, or little foam filter. Got the crud blown out of the cover. I think we're just about ready to put some fuel in there and give her a test. Oh, we're gonna, uh, I'm gonna pull that plug out, and just have a look at it. Looks like a three quarter. Doesn't look bad. I'll gap it. Toss, but the piston's not full of crap. I can see somewhat in the cylinder there. I would bring the camera over, but there's not a chance you'd be able to see it. There's no scoring on the exhaust side of the bore. No scoring on the inside of the bore. Okay. Check that plug out. Twenty six thou, good enough. It's not crazy dirty either. I don't sometimes I'll buzz them down on a wire wheel. But it wasn't wasn't that dirty. Good and snug. Get that high tension lead back on there. I might actually need a new one. It looks like a rodent's been chewing at it. See if you can see that top of the spark plug boot there. We'll see. <laughs> see what I got for a two stroke. I might have some in here. Oh, I got a little splash in this container. Let's see what happens. Let's see if it's enough. Not a lot. Fuel filter's underwater though, or <laughs> under fuel. Good thing it's not underwater. Okay. I'm not gonna bother pulling the muffler off. It doesn't look like it's too caked up with carbon and crap, so I'm not gonna pull it apart and look at it yet, but uh, well, I'm gonna get the camera spun around, get this thing fired up, and we'll see how she runs. All right, we got the garage door open, so it might get a little washed with light on the camera there, but. Uh, Primer bulb seems to work. It's full of fuel. Put some choke on it. It's quiet. up a little bit and see if it runs any better all right so it was uh, bogging out a little bit I'd run it on choke 
partially choked. And now uh, it ran a little bit, fresh gas in there, it seems to have cleared itself out. So choke is all the way off now. Revs all the way up. That's good. This little slide here is uh, it's a throttle lock and it's got stages. Let's see, what, let's see what I'm looking at here. Though. So you can you pull the trigger and you slide this up and it'll hold the trigger up actually. There we are. She's done. This is the vacuum side. It's a vac attack. <laughs> so you can hook a vacuum attachment on this side and it'll pull up. I have a I have my own electric version of this type of thing. Mine's a just a Toro. It's a leaf vacuum. It works pretty good actually. It mulches it uh, when I suck up the leaves on my yard with it. Uh, I could fit about four times as much leaves into one paper yard bag than if I just write them up. So it saves a lot of that. Anyways, guys, that's uh, that's gonna be the end of this one. Little home light vac attack two. I was getting concerned there that the. Uh, carburetor diaphragms may just not have been in a good enough condition but uh, the fuel that I put in there has got synthetic uh, two-stroke oil in it it's uh, 91 octane non-ethanol fuel and I always treat all my fuel with uh, seafoam fuel additive it cleans stuff out it just it it works anyways guys don't forget to click that little square button right there to subscribe if you haven't click the bell icon to notify you when I upload new videos I'd like to take this time to thank you for joining me on this little tiny home light adventure. And until the next video, take care. We'll see you later.